Hi, Mark Gallucci with Digital Control. This short video, we are going to discuss the four ways that we change a transmitter's mode or frequency while we're underground. If we're using classic F5, we're going to be talking about changing the frequency from the high frequency to low frequency. When we're talking about the Falcon F5, we're talking about changing the mode from the up mode to the down mode, which in fact changes the, the bands that we have selected. So the first way that we set a transmitter's frequency or mode is by loading the batteries. If I take my transmitter and I point it to the sky and I literally fire, turn it on, put the batteries in it, turn it on when it's pointing up, I'm going to start it up in the up mode or I'm going to start, the, if I'm using a, a classic F5, I'm going to start the higher of the two frequencies. Conversely, if we point it down and turn it on, we're going to start in the lower frequency for the classic 5 and we're going to start in the in the all, the down mode with the Falcon F5. So let's say we do that. What if I was to start up horizontally in more of a neutral position? The transmitter will start up in the same mode or frequency that it was the last time it was in use. So let's say we do that. We now have a transmitter started up. We're going to put our transmitter in the housing and we're going to take our receiver off the prescribed distance and we're going to calibrate it. We've done that calibration. Well, because these are dual frequency transmitters, dual mode transmitters, to take advantage of that, we have to conduct a second calibration. We don't want you to have to pull the thing out and change the batteries again, pull the batteries out. What you do is you grab the nose of your housing, you grab it, and you bring it straight up. Something more than 65 degrees, something less than vertical, and you count. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, up to 1,013, and then you lay it back down. So one thing critical about using this tilt method is the clock face. When you start this procedure, you bring it up, and when you bring it back down, you need to maintain the exact same clock position, or you're going to find yourself having to do this method over again because it won't work. So make sure that you maintain the same clock position the whole time you bring it up, you count, and you bring it back down. So we've done that. We've, had, we've got the transmitter to change. How do you know if you're successful in changing the mode or the transmitter's frequency? Well, you take a look at your display on your receiver. A successful change means that you're going to, the frequency, will, the signal strength will have dropped out and the data will have dropped out. We expect to see that. That lets us know that the transmitter has in fact changed to the alternate mode of frequency. So we've done that. Let's calibrate the second frequency. Transmitter's in the head. We, we, we bolt on the, the bit, you know, bolt torque on the bit to the drill string and we begin drilling. And we get so far out and we realize, you know what, it's time to employ that alternate frequency or shift bands with the Falcon. We can do that underground. There's two methods and we refer to both of these methods as roll combinations. The first roll combination we, we title 10 to 7. And that's because you're going to go to 10 o'clock, you're going to go to 2 o'clock, and then you're going to go to 7 o'clock. So to begin this roll, all roll combinations, you rotate the drill string two or three revolutions, and then you let it sit dead idle for a minimum of 40 seconds. That 40 second rest period will clear any timers that might be active in the transmitter. So you wait your 40 seconds, and now you're going to slowly roll it to 10 o'clock. And we're going clockwise now. Slowly roll it to 10 o'clock, and you count. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, up to 1,013. Continue on to 2 o'clock clockwise. And now you count, once again, all the way up to 13. And finally, you rotate it one last time down to 7 o'clock, and you count. 10, 12, 15 seconds later, that transmitter will have shifted its mode or its broadcasting frequency. Again, confirm that by looking at the receiver. It's up to you to get into the receiver's menu and change that accordingly so that it's set to pick up the correct frequency being set from the transmitter. So that's how you do the, the 10 to 7. The last method we're going to talk about is what we call the repeat roll sequence, RRS. And we would employ this when we're underground under two circumstances. One, if I'm not getting good clock data, it's sketchy and interference or we're so deep. Or two, I've got the roll offset feature enacted. 
I'm not going to go into great detail with the roll offset, but just so you know, roll offset, we use that, we digitally change a transmitter's clock face so that can match a bit that was screwed on to the front of a housing. So if, you've got, if we've got roll offset enacted, then we're going to use this RRS method. To do RRS, again, you're going to rotate your drill string two or three times, and then you're going to stop and you're going to let that drill string sit dead still for a minimum of 40 seconds. Again, that clears any timers that might be active in the transmitter. During this 40 second pause, you're going to get yourself a wax crayon, a sp spray paint, or some way that you can mark the exact 12 o'clock position of your drill rod. Having done that, we're now going to rotate one complete rotation, and that is clockwise. Bring that, that crayon mark right to the very top, and you wait. 1001, 1002, 1003, up to 1013. And we're going to rotate it a second time. And we're going to, we're going to once again count to 13. We're going to rotate it a third time. After that third rotation, you know, within a minute, you're going to have the results you want. The transmitter's mode will have changed or the transmitter's frequency will have shifted. Now specifically for you classic F5 users, if you were to do one last rotation, a fourth rotation on this RRC, RRS sequence, that is how you go into and out of X-range mode. This is only relevant if you've got a classic F5 receiver and a transmitter that's X-range. Falcon F5 users, uh, pay no attention to that fourth roll that doesn't do anything. Lastly, I want to let you guys know, you guys that are using the, the Aurora, so all Aurora users, be them built-in or panel mounts, there's an application that you can use to, to go into and out of, uh, out of these uh, roll combinations. We've got a 10 to 7 roll, roll sequence. We've got the RRS roll sequence, and then we've got the X-Rain roll sequence. So turning this on, hitting the button, it makes it very easy to complete this, these roll sequences underground on the first go. So hope that helps. Thank you very much.